Luke Enman Simarao is going to be talking about uh, um, iPhone driver. Uh, so I, as you said, I work for Salesforce. Um, I am a senior member of the technical staff there. Um, here's some info. Uh, I've been asked to post the link to the slides that you're going to be seeing. So here they are. Um, so everyone today so far has really been focused on native app testing. Uh, I guess I'm diverging a lot, and I'm just going to be talking about testing um, the browser in iPhone. Uh, purely Selenium's iPhone driver. Uh, quick apologies to those who were just at the Selenium San Jose meetup, because this is going to sound very familiar. <laughs> um, so first thing you got to get done is I see many of you have already done this by shows of the laptops and the tables. But you need to get a Mac, because uh, running the iPhone um, code and the simulator it, its only on this one platform, as many of you are well aware. Uh, the next step you need to do is check out the Selenium project. You need the entire source tree uh, in order to run, because there's third-party dependencies um, that you know, we just haven't incorporated just into the iPhone project. So be sure to check it all out, JavaScript atoms, the, those sorts of things. Your next step, uh, load it into Xcode. Um, Please try to stay on the latest version of Xcode. Uh, we're, uh, the project hasn't seen too many updates, but it's getting um, know, hopefully some more soon. Uh, and those updates might require the latest and greatest Xcode. So you'll need um, Lion, Mountain Lion, um, the latest version of Xcode. Um, uh, it's, it's fairly simple once you get it going. Um, just uh, load the iPhone project from the source tree and hit the play button and there you go. <laughs> a blank screen is actually really good for the iPhone driver. Um, <laughs> might not seem like it, but it is. Uh, one thing that's not blank that you notice is <coughs> showing up, I guess. Uh, at the very bottom there's a status bar uh, that says the URL um, of how to connect to your, your instance. Um, in this case, uh, it was grabbing my IP address for you know when I was logged in at work or whenever that was. But uh, one thing to know is on real devices, you also want to pay attention to that. Um, it does prefer the Wi-Fi network um, IP address, thankfully, than the um, wireless carrier's IP address, which it used to do. Um, but uh, let's show it in action. Here's my simulator. Um, one thing, I actually very recently upgraded to Lion, thankfully. I, my work took a long time to get me to, I was stuck on Snow Leopard for forever. And one thing that tripped me out on the simulator at first was, there's no home button. <laughs> How in the world do I get home? Um, there's a shortcut key, uh, Apple Shift H. Um, it's very useful, double tapping to get your in process icons. Uh, there is my. All right, so first thing I want to do is uh, go through this simple script. Uh, I'm sorry, today, um, if, if you're not aware, uh, Selenium uh, WebDriver allows you to code in many different languages right now. You can do Java, Ruby, Python, C Sharp, Perl. Uh, I believe there's a Haskell binding. Um, there's a few others. What? PHP. Oh, PHP. Yeah, of course, PHP. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone who comes with PHP questions to the Selenium uh, IRC channel, I just, um, yeah. <laughs> there's other languages. Um, OK, Python, uh, I'm showing these examples. I'm sorry for all you Rubyists out there, but I'm a, I prefer Python. Uh, it, this library is fairly simple. You import it um, from Selenium Import WebDriver. Um, connect to a remote instance in this case for the iPhone driver. Um, you normally are passing in the, if you're on a real device, you can pass the uh, IP address as long as you're on the same subnet. Or in this case, um, running the simulator, you're always on localhost. Um, there's desired capabilities with uh, Selenium. 
um, and all the bindings have iPhone and iPad. Uh, they mainly don't do anything when you're directly connecting to the device. The, the code that's running on the device doesn't actually care. Um, it's, that's all for <coughs> hooking it up to a Selenium grid later. Uh, I'll touch on that in a second. Um, so this is just you know, launching a, um, uh, a git command to navigate the URL, find an element, and send the keys to it. So let's watch that go. Please go. There you go. <laughs> All right, so there it went. Uh, loaded up my, uh, my web page and filled out the, the email address as I, as I wanted it to do. Um, that's great. Um, so the first question that usually gets or asked for brand new uh, testers is this, is how in the world do I figure out uh, the locators for these elements, um, especially on iPhone, iPads, uh, a lot of web, de web developers like to um, produce completely different markup than the, you know, what you normally see. There's a couple options you can. Um, you can load up uh, Firefox or Chrome and, and spoof the user agent and do that. Um, sometimes it doesn't work quite <coughs> right. Uh, but in, I think I had the thing. There's uh, another way to do it. Um, you can look at it with, um, there's two different ways. Right now with the latest and greatest um, 6.0, this is nifty, simple, launch Safari. Um, sorry, you can't do this through the Selenium app um, because it's not actually publishing the protocol um, to connect. You, so I'm in mobile Safari, I'm launching regular Safari. Uh, if you haven't already enabled the developer tab, just enable it, and then all of a sudden this thing pops up right here. This is Safari 6, by the way, and iPhone 6, and you can connect. And now I'm connected to a remote debugging instance for um, Safari. This is just like how Chrome Inspector works, it's the same thing as the WebKit Inspector. And, um, now I can actually see my input element, and I can see, it's not very easy probably to see, um, that the ID is um, some generated thing with ending in email. And back at my example, I did a CSS selector, I hope that's highlighting, um, showing that the ID ends in email. Um, Let's move on quickly. Uh, Selenium Grid. Um, this, uh, I, th I think Francois kind of showed it a little bit. Uh, other people are touching on how to distribute tests across it. You can automatically connect your iPhone driver to a Selenium Grid, and I will show that briefly. Um, in your settings, um, there will appear an iWeb driver. Then you can just simply type in the host name or IP address and the port. And after you've done that, you actually need to make sure you kill the app, start it again, and it will automatically then attempt to connect to that grid host and, and register itself. Um, so then you can, can easily do that um, if you've got a Selenium grid farm. Um, also, uh, I, I, this is my point to note that Sauce Labs provides iPhone support and it's really nice to just add that in as another, another place to hook it in and they use uh, simulators as far as I'm aware. Uh, let's go back. So now that you can do it, and it's great, and it's wonderful, and you're testing away, um, you probably want to know what doesn't work about it. What, where does it fall flat in its face? Uh, first one I want to show you is uh, alert handling. Um, when you get alerts in iPhone driver, uh, you can't do anything at this point. You're kind of stuck in the water. Sometimes the alerts don't even show up. I've, I've done a little bit of a trickery here. I've set a JavaScript timeout to even show this displaying. Um, I, the code currently locks you up. Um, if you've done a click on something that doesn't alert, it'll even freeze on that command. Um, 
you're kind of dead in the water right now. Uh, I, as a immediate solution, um, what you can do is, um, because you have access to execute JavaScript, override the alert command. Um, and this demo, I'll run it again. Note, you didn't actually see anything show up on the simulator, but I got this output to say the alert because I mapped it into a local variable on the window and I returned it and got it myself. Um, this allows you to kind of keep going with your testing right now, but it's not a great solution. Uh, I've actually got something in the works to try to provide an actual API for it, um, but it might or might not uh, end up doing what I'm trying to do. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, another, um, another issue that's uh, pretty major is there's no window, multiple window handling. Um, when you launch, um, when you have your browser and, or sorry, when you're on your site and you click a link and it says window.open, um, some authentication uh, services try to do this. Uh, that window.open doesn't actually spawn a new window. It actually uses the UI web view, which is uh, what this is uh, um, developed or using currently. Um, and it's the same web view that existed before the window will open. So it's as if the URL was just navigating to. And so window.close does nothing. Um, if, you're, if you had JavaScript on your site that tried to then close it, even though it works in actual Safari on the device, it won't work in iPhone driver right now. Uh, this is one of my more favorite um, bugs that's currently going on. Um, it, there is a problem with Unicode support. Um, as in Unicode trans characters are getting translated quite oddly. If you notice, I just typed in a t-shirt and a shoe and a face. Um, yeah, it's in interesting. Yeah, emoji, emoji icons. Um, that, that, was trying to, that was trying to send the enter and re return and tab keys. So if you're normally used to trying to develop um, your, most of your um, Selenium scripts uh, with, with those keys being sent. Uh, this obviously will fail. You won't be able to submit your form by the keys.return. What you can do is actually pass in the, the uh, slash new line character, simply put, not using the keys, and that actually works. Um, there's, uh, I'm gonna touch into it in a minute. There's a, uh, a bug, and ho hopefully we can we can troubleshoot that in the future. Um, and I'll, I'll try to show you troubleshooting of that in a minute. Um, next is cross-domain frames. Um, Woohoo! Well, that one didn't. Yeah, that actually did what it was supposed to do. Um, so, actually, that didn't do what it was supposed to do. Oh well. Um, so what's, what's going on? Likely our thing changed a little bit. There's um, a, a, oftentimes people are trying to automate uh, clicking of the um, social widgets um, and half of those are usually embedded in iframes. And those iframes are usually not in the same domain that you're in, um, like Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, or Google Plus. Um, trying to switch to that frame, trying to execute web driver commands which are most of the time, um, injecting JavaScript into your um, into your page to process your command, uh, you, we're trapped by the JavaScript sandbox because you're not allowed to execute JavaScript from one frame to another. Uh, and what the UI web view provides is an execution of the script only at the top root level frame. Um, so essentially, dead in the water. I have no workaround for this. I don't know anything that one can do other than um, try to avoid frames that are cross-domain. <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of one of those really big sorries. Hopefully Apple is listening and they'll provide some API for us to test that sort of thing in. Um, let's see. Uh, another, another great thing is um, driver.quit is, um, uh, utterly useless in the iPhone. Uh, you're gonna kind of watch it go right now. It goes to the site, does a quit, 
and you can see that everything is still there. Um, nothing has changed, nothing has been destroyed, nothing has been, you can start your script, the next script to connect will be left off exactly where um, the page was before it quit. Uh, all cookies, all caches, all everything is still all there. Um, the only workaround I can think for this is either you're killing it yourself, you kill the whole process, and then you clear out, um, there's local temporary data that gets stored on the hard disk that you can, you can find, um, uh, that you can actually manually delete in between test runs. Uh, the other solution, I'll, I'll, I'll plug you guys one more time, Sauce Labs, uh, when, you're, when you're doing this, they're creating and destroying VMs. If you have an infrastructure to do that, that's great. You could spin up a brand new VM, uh, have, have your uh, simulator launched, um, and when you finish your test, when you quit, you destroy that VM and respawn a new one. And that, that'll take care of all your caching and, um, uh, caching and cookie problems that you'll definitely run into uh, in between test runs. Um, and uh, the last thing I wanted to try to go through real quick is uh, if anyone wanted to get comfortable in helping uh, contribute to the source code of this, um, it would be much, much appreciated. Uh, this, if you were to start up the um, iWeb driver or load it in, um, uh, as, as said before, really without doing anything different, you can choose your simulator uh, and hit run, and that will then give you your simulator with the new version of the code. If I wanted to set a breakpoint, uh, I don't have time to go in depth on how to, how to find this, but right now, um, let's just say I wanted to troubleshoot the sending keys, the Unicode problem. Um, there's an element object that uh, you are typing the keys into, um, here's send keys. And if I jumped to that definition of it, here's kind of um, where that code's going to get called and executed. So I'm going to set a breakpoint just by clicking over on the left. Uh, run my simple script that attempts to. So I loaded up the site and I found this uh, element and I'm going to send. Uh, I'm sending the return, <coughs> the return key. Um, so in here, I can see um, that if I print out something like the dictionary, I can see that the com the data that I got across was here's this web element ID um, on my session ID, and the value that it's trying to post is this Unicode value. Um, then the next thing it does in the Egyptic C code is then call this execute script atoms. Um, Selenium is, is based on a concept called, uh, or most of the underlying pieces are developed in these things called atoms, which are minute pieces of code that are written in JavaScript that are to do certain actions. And that's the, really the kind of basis that that all this code is run in Firefox and IE and Chrome even um, uh, in Android um, that the, this little JavaScript code is doing that action that you're trying to, to, to perform. Sending keys does more than just set the value on an input element. It actually sends the on uh, key down, on key press, uh, on, on key up, all the uh, JavaScript events that you would expect. Uh, and so that's what this atom is doing. And typically, I would assume that the Atom's gone through a bit of rigorous um, testing in all the other browsers, and it seems to work. So the, my, my first gut is there's probably not necessarily a problem with the Atom's, but there's probably something with my encoding of the Unicode string that somehow that this string that's getting converted from the JSON object that's getting passed in is not properly in Unicode support, or maybe I just haven't enabled Unicode support on the app that I'm running, or a few things. Um, if anyone is interested in trying to solve this problem, please come see me and help contribute to this open source project. It's a wonderful thing, Selenium. Um, I think I'm, did I have any more talking points? Oh yeah, uh, other pro, sorry, I didn't touch on the other, that was the frame, that was quits. 
that was debugging. <laughs> uh, what's going on? Um, the, Selenium's a, a all volunteer project, as most or many open source projects are. Um, we are constantly trying to get people to help contribute. Um, and well, I, I guess wouldn't say trying. We're, we like to see engagement from the community as much as possible. Um, I'm trying to advocate today that if you have, or if you are working on this, or if you're trying something, and if you found something that doesn't work for you, but then you found a workaround in some way, please give back to the community. Um, you can find me uh, on the Selenium IRC channel or the mailing list. Um, I, I try to look at the issue tractor as much as possible. Um, I wanted to touch on um, uh, alert handling a little bit. Um, I think I have a potential solution. Um, there's one, one sticking point that uh, Simon Stewart has, has tried to, um, the lead of the Selenium web driver project, that uh, uh, no code in the iPhone driver should be using what's called private APIs. Uh, because we potentially want to try at some point to submit this app to the App Store for automating web apps, and private APIs would kill it. The only solution I've seen so far with alert handling is actually using those private APIs to bypass the uh, alert modal um, dialog from showing up. Um, so most likely in the future, if you want alert handling, I'm going to try to make a private branch that you could use instead that will contain the code that will handle alerts. But and until then, until we decide whether or not we're completely abandoning the idea of App Store, you're, you're going to see it um, split. Um, there's a whole bunch of bugs, and there's a whole bunch of current existing functionality that doesn't exist uh, in the iPhone driver. There's touch events. There's, uh, there's a lot of APIs that are just uh, not implemented, and those are all ignored. So if, if, if we run the Selenium suite, you, you'll see that this, these tests are just skipped because the, we know that they won't work on the iPhone. Um, so that goes to, we should run them. Um, if you, uh, maybe I should get it here. So it, when you have your checkout of trunk, Selenium, you can, there's a lot of stuff here. There's the iPhone project, but to run all the tests for iPhone, it's just go test iPhone, I can type. Um, I'm not gonna run that, that takes down my computer almost. Um, <laughs> but if you're doing changes, uh, please feel free to try to run this uh, and make sure that you're not breaking anything else uh, in the meantime. Um, and that's, oops, that's, I think it. Um, Please contribute. Thank you. Um, so one, one big question that I've got is, do you have examples of where running your web tests in, in, uh, in this rather than in against Chrome driver or Safari on the desktop has, has found bugs? Uh, and then also examples of where you've found uh, bugs by running it on a device rather than a simulator? Good question. Um, you're, you're, you're basically going to put me up against the wall because I am not in charge of a team that's writing a lot of tests in this. <laughs> I, I have used this recreationally, and I, I don't think I personally have a large suite. Um, so I don't know. Um, form factors, I've seen, I've seen Differences with form factors with using it in Chrome versus using it uh, in the simulator, but that's um, about it. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 we had the same experience. We were running a, uh, we were using using this tool for, for doing test automation, and it was it was very slow relative to running a Chrome driver. So we switched to Chrome driver, and I've always wondered whether we missed a bunch of bugs that we would have found. <laughs> so if any, if anyone else is using this tool and has found bugs using this and particularly running it in the device rather than uh, running Chrome driver or something like that, I, I'd love to. I'd love to hear from you because I, I think it's, it makes more sense to do this. But I, I'd like to have an argument to give to people. Okay. Ben. Hey. So I was just curious. You were talking a lot about some of the 
platform issues that are kind of blocking you from doing things that you'd like to do, and how these seem to be limitations in mobile Safari, or I guess web UI web view. I was curious if you tried to talk to Apple about these limitations, uh, or if they're receptive to feedback, or? I don't have a contact at Apple, and I have not uh, heard of anyone being able to kind of break through. There's some other contributors on the project that seem to have contacts um, to iPhone, or uh, the Apple corporate. Um, I think they're potentially, the, the way the Selenium project wants to see things done in the future is uh, the browser vendor themselves take over control of the automation piece, the server side. Um, actually, just you saw it earlier with the marionette, and that's Perfect example, Mozilla taking over complete control of, of the Selenium web driver uh, on the browser itself. Chrome has already done that with Chrome driver. Uh, we would love to see Apple with Safari and mobile Safari um, do the, the same thing. Um, I don't necessarily know where those talks are. I know there's a few people who are trying to do backdoor channels, but uh, I'm not privy myself. So, Thank you. Any other questions? I was wondering, you were talking about putting an app in App Store. Uh, yes. Why? Uh, because the only way to get this app currently on app physical devices is to purchase um, you know, an Apple developer certificate. Um, uh. And not necessarily everyone's purchased one of those or hobbyists. So to get this running on a physical device, you need to actually have a developer license. OK, come talk to us afterwards. The other thing is um, well, you should definitely um, look into this version where you do private APIs because they will, as you know, they will overcome a lot of problems. And I think there are a lot of applications for that that's, that's useful. So go talk to Pete. You can use public automation on some of our stuff. And it will solve some of the problems. The Unicode problem, the uh, okay. alert problem, all this stuff. Cool. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Thanks to Luke.